The kingdom of God has a language. The kingdom of God has a culture. The kingdom of God has an expression. And the Lord is saying this year is a year of great upheaval, not only negative, but great upheaval in the positive. And so it's time for you to get ready to move. It's time for you to get ready to start to step into what you were created to do. It's time for you to start to pioneer again says the Lord and this is a good thing because the Lord is saying this year as we start to pioneer we're going to not just open the gates but we are going to be his gates of glory so that the king can come in that is what I'm going to be talking about today My name is Arlene Westerhoff, and welcome to my weekly word of prophetic encouragement. Now, these words are meant to help you. They are meant to give you vision. They are meant to give you courage because it's much easier to step out when you are walking with a group that is all going the same direction. And so today we're going to spend time talking about the fact that it is time for the kingdom of God to arise through you. It is time for us to arise and shine. Now, as we do this, we're going to start with Psalm chapter 24, because this, I'm sure many of you have heard it. We are going from Psalm 23 year to a Psalm 24 year, where it says in Psalm 24, starting from verse seven, lift up your heads, you gates, be lifted up your ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O you gates, lift them up, you ancient doors, that the king of glory may come in. And so right now, as we just read that out, we just say, I lift up my head. I lift up my head. I'm going to ask you to put that into the chat right now. I lift up my head so that the King of glory may come in. And this year, says God, it's not only going to be that we open the gates so that the King of glory can come in, but this year the Lord is saying we are the gates. You are the gate. The, the King of glory, God himself, is going to use to come in. You are the gate. I am the gate. Together we are the gates that will usher in the light of God into the places that he has placed us. And so God is saying, indeed, it's a year of change. It's a year of upheaval, but it is a year of forward movement for you. For you. And so we're going to talk about what that looks like now. I'm just going to, you know, go to the story of Caleb. And Caleb is someone who, you know, God speaks really highly of, but he's also someone who I just love. Caleb is one of my heroes. Why do I say that? Because after, you know, 40 plus years of wandering in the wilderness and another five years, you know, of having a fight together with the children of Israel as they took all of their allotments in the promised land. And he hadn't even gotten his yet, you know, but as they took cities and towns in the promised land, you know, Caleb was a man who was in the midst of upheaval, but also forward moving motion. And so we're going to take a look at Caleb, who he was, what he was like in the book of Numbers. You know what? It says that the Lord, in Numbers 26, verse 65, it says the Lord had told the Israelites that they would surely die in the wilderness. Remember, this was after the spies had gone into the nation, you know, the promised land, and they had come back, and 10 of them had given a negative report. 
And so the spies had gone into the nation and they had come back and given a negative report, everyone except Joshua and Caleb. But not one of them was left except Caleb, son of Jephunneh, and Joshua, son of Nun. Why? The scriptures say they were men who had another spirit. And what characterized that other spirit that these two had? Actually, they followed the Lord wholeheartedly. It says, Numbers 32, verse 12, it says, Caleb and Joshua, they followed the Lord wholeheartedly. And that is something that is crucial to understand. You know, it's just they followed the Lord wholeheartedly. That also means that they trusted God. And so Caleb, you know, and Joshua, both of them, <clears throat> they were men, they were leaders. <clears throat> when the 10 spies were, or the 12 spies, sorry, were sent out. And they were at least in their 40s. And we know that's true for Caleb because later on in the book of Joshua, Caleb goes to his friend Joshua, who's also his leader, and he says the following. And uh, yeah, Caleb also goes to Joshua and he says the following. And he says, you know, it's just now then, just as the Lord has promised that he has kept me alive for these 45 years. Remember, 40 years through the wilderness, some of you are feeling like you have been stuck. If you are, you know, just type in, please, I feel stuck. Some of you know you've been stuck for a long time. Can you imagine how Caleb felt? You know, he and Joshua, they'd been faithful to God. And yet through the unfaithfulness of others, they had had to wander 40 years in the wilderness for a journey that only was supposed to take 11 days. And after 45 years, 40 years wilderness wandering, five years, you know, conquering the cities and the peoples in the promised land, he goes to Joshua and he says, just like he promised, God kept me alive these 45 years. Today, this is good news for you. The Lord is saying, just like he promised, God's words are true. God's promises are true. So just like he promised, says the Lord, he will keep you alive. God is saying, if you've been waiting for a long time, God's word is true. Caleb knew the God who he served, and he knew that God would come through on his word. And I love it when he says in verse 12 of that chapter in Joshua, you know, he says, now give me this hill country that the Lord has promised me. You know, it's essentially what he's saying is give me my mountain. Give me my mountain. I'm 85 years old, but I am ready to pioneer again. Give me my mountain, the hill country. This wasn't an easy place for, jo or for Caleb to take, but he said, give it to me. I'm ready to fight. I'm ready to pioneer, to step out again. The Lord is saying to each one of us, this is our pioneering season in God. And even though you may have done other things before, God is saying it's time for you to take your mountain. And so that is what Caleb did. And towards the end of the book of Joshua, we see that Caleb and his descendants had taken the ground that God had given to them. That is what it's going to look like in this season to actually be the gate so that the king of glory can come in. Now, Caleb and his descendants didn't fight this battle, you know, just on their own strength. Caleb and his descendants had the Lord with them. Why? Because they were fighting according to God's will. They were fighting God's battles to take the ground that he had given to them. And if God can do it for Caleb when he is 85 years old, then God says he will do it for you. Doesn't matter how old you are. 
Every one of us, God is saying, is being equipped, is being armed, and to be dangerous to the realm of darkness around us. So God is saying it's a time of upheaval. It's a time of change. It's a time to take your mountain so that God's light can shine, and he will give that to you. Interestingly enough, a while ago, you know, many of you who know my husband and I, you know that we have spent years pioneering, you know, the apostolic center that God has called us to lead, to start and to lead. And, you know, we've seen transformation come in different spheres. However, recently, you know, God sent a friend to me, an international prophet who I respect greatly. And this prophet was prophesying over Dick and I, and she was saying, Dick and Arlene, the Lord is saying, it's time to pioneer again. And they're saying, you know, you don't have to start from zero this time. And I thought, praise the Lord for that. But she said, you get to start from where you are now, what you've already seen established now, but it's time to pioneer again. And then she said something that filled my heart with joy. Why? Because she said, and I can't even see the end of what God is going to give you. You know what? As I speak, I just experienced the Lord is saying, this is exceedingly abundantly more also for you. If you just type that in and say it to yourself, type it into the chat. This is the season of exceedingly abundantly more than I can ask or imagine, says God. What is that going to look like? <clears throat> the Lord is saying some of you who are watching, he's going to send into the halls of government to see things change. God is saying to all of you who are watching, all of us who know his name, it's time to expect the Holy Ghost breakout of signs and wonders and miracles for all of us. And so what, you know, faith, God is saying, has an expression. Faith has an act. And yeah, in Micah chapter 2, verse 13, you know, it's just the Lord talks about you know, the breaker going before us, you know, God himself going before us. It's not time, says God, to retreat. It's not time to back up. The Lord is saying it's time for us to move forward, says God. And so this year, says God, as we move forward, the Lord said, I myself will be with you. I myself will be with you, says the Lord. God is saying, it's time to fight my battles. Some of you, God is saying, you know, it's just because of the fighting and because you got discouraged, you know, it's just you fought half-heartedly or even put down your swords. But God is saying, pick up the words, pick up the prophetic words that were spoken out over your life and start to war in the spirit with them. There are those of you who know that you are called to great wealth. And I am not, you know, it's just a name it, claim it preacher. Absolutely not. But God is saying, I am looking for vessels, those who would finance and who are called to finance my kingdom advancement across the earth. And you know what? Even as I speak that out, if that is something that God has spoken to you about before, just say, Lord, here I am. Here I am. You know what? I'm putting up my hand too because the Lord has said to us in the past, you know, we are called to finance projects to see the kingdom advance across the world. God is saying, this is the time and this is the place. And so I bless you today to be rightly positioned. The Lord's saying, are you in the place where your vision, the vision that I have given you can be fulfilled? If not, it's time to shift into that place. Especially for those of you who are prophets, 
you need to find your tribe this year. You absolutely have to find that group of prophets, a prophetic community that you are called to track with. How do you do that? First, you know, it's just there's so many prophetic things, videos, etc., that are available right now, but God is saying it's time to focus. Find the one or two prophetic voices that you're going to listen to this year. If you don't, you're going to be all over the place. It's time to focus, says the Lord. And so as I end this broadcast today, I just bless you with clarity. I release the clarity of God over you to know what you are called to do, but not only to know what you're called to do, I release the Holy Ghost boldness over you. Caleb had that Holy Ghost boldness because he knew the power of the God he served and he knew the God that he served. And I release the ability again to act in accordance to the will of God. I just bless you with this broadcast, and I just say, it is time for you to see great change happen in your life as the Holy Ghost flows through you and you become the gate that God uses to flood into your circumstances through. In Jesus' name, amen.